doing some research on the internet, we just found out that the Ford Museum in Detroit has one of the remaining Dimension houses by Richard Buckminster Fuller, Bucky Fuller. At Wichita, Kansas, in the very center of the United States, the housing problem brings out a circular dwelling built of aluminum and plastics. Instead of a foundation, this cornerless cottage is suspended from a central mast of stainless steel. The engineering principle, with the safety factor of a suspension bridge, permits new ideas like a revolving roof, which gives a complete change of air every six minutes. Using new war-developed lightweight metals and prefabrication of parts by mass production, this home of living room, two bedrooms, two baths and a kitchen can be economically produced. A roundhouse may seem strange, but in a housing shortage, people are giving attention to all new ideas. That's a museum? Museum of cars and, and innovations and things. You guys can do your thing. Don't leave the building, okay? We are at the Henry Ford Museum. Henry Ford was the, the builder of the modern economy, in a way, by creating the assembly line. And uh, Ford was able to create the first mass-produced car, the Ford T. What interests us today is the Dimaction concept. Dimaction House, to me, what Bucky Fuller was trying to achieve was the mass production house. He wanted a 4T for houses. It's Dimaction House, so Dimaxion is actually you know, a word that is created by integrating the words dynamic, uh, maximum, and tension. Tension, maximum tension is a concept that Bucky Fuller, he had this intuition that it was not something random, that nature would come all the time with a system that seemed to hold together, creating a superficial and a structural tension. Same concepts go with plants and with the golden ratio. There is not a coincidence that the spiral is used all over nature, all the time. Bucky Fuller thought it was possible to create an aerodynamic house, achieving the most with the least. That's why the dynamic maximum tension, according to Fuller, was achieved by, by a shape that will remind us of different 20th century concepts that became actually mass production goods. One is the recreational vehicle, the Airstream, and the other is the origin of the Airstream, which is aircraft. The first modern aircraft that were able to, let's say, integrate modern materials. From there, metal and mm, plastic composites became, sort of became a thing. Let's remember how domes, once it's put together, it creates a tension that self-assures. It's going to be solid. In this case, the skeleton, which is super light, is going to hold a lot of weight. The central mast goes up first, and the rest of the lightweight house hangs on this pole. Interior pods and walls can be moved to change sizes of rooms. Circumferences are very tricky for construction. There is a reason why they are not more used. It's difficult to create a layout out of a circular structure. Services and things you can't move are going to tend to be around the nucleus. So by the external parts of the circumference, we find windows, doors. As we go in, we can imagine how light is going to permeate through the structure, no matter the orientation of the sun or the season. First thing that comes to my mind when I see this, it's round and open, so it's modern house but open, and to me it's airstreamy. I see an airstream here, but I also see uh, innovation in materials, uh, how you put them. You see finishes on the metal side that are very similar to aircraft design. This riveting of metal it was proved and tested in aircraft. Then another thing, despite the fact that the house is round, the interior is quite conventional and cozy. It's not overly futuristic, so it could be used by any conventional family in the 50s, 60s. So first thing that comes to my mind is that the living room is quite spacious. Then another thing I see is that the center of the structure appears to be open. 
those vents create a wind tunnel that are going to ventilate the whole house. Okay, so now we're in. So there is a balcony that, that creates a flow, like uh, living structures with a circular shape related to the golden ratio and the Fibonacci number, the spiral, which is some design that is used all the time in nature. Welcome to the house of the future relative to the 1920s. So as you can see, we've got high vaulted ceilings and wide panoramic views and a great illusion of space that's bigger than really what we've got. It's only 1,017 square feet. Is it any wonder he was a veteran of World War I? He served on board a submarine vessel He decided that he wanted to draw from his experience. If you were to have bought a house like this, you would have ordered your walls from the catalog. Say you wanted all mechanized shelves, you can have that. If you wanted all rotating closet space, you can have that as well. You have a round closet here. It's, it's a rotating structure. It just takes advantage of the space. So it was up to you to pick and choose and decide when and where and how big you wanted your rooms to be. He's really trying to give the power back to the people with this design idea. The cost of the house itself for a consumer was $6,500. The average mean of a house back then was $5,000. Okay. But 50% of the time it came with an outhouse. So yeah, no, that's not fun times. Single unit bathroom is dropped in on site. You know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about the, uh, an airplane toilet. And we're talking about a very easy to clean environment. The whole bottom of the bathroom is one material. Floor and counter and shower are the same sort of composite easy to clean fiber. Then the toilet is on one side, you have the sink on the other side, some storage and the shower. In, in such a design, you are not going to be concerned about spilling water or about humidity going to the rest of the house. It's like a self-contained compartment. But it's not just these aesthetic appeals, these aesthetic values that make the house unique. We're not in just a roundhouse, we're actually off of the ground right now. The secret of the Dymaxion house lies in its central construction. But Mr. Fuller was to trying to change the way we thought about structure in order to address certain things like extreme weather conditions. So here we have a, a central mass, a network of strong pillars that are driven about eight feet deep into a solid slab of concrete, from which you have a network of suspension cables that reach across, lattice across one another, and hang onto the floor. It's in essence this high tension which holds the walls in an upright position. However, the suspension style cables, as they expand and contract, and they grant this house a measure of agility that no other house has. When combined with a plexiglass exterior, now you have a house that functions like an airplane, able to withstand those drops in pressure. It can adjust its shape and change itself according to those values. That's the thing that makes the house really good. The central mass and the suspension. Suspension cables, because that's what makes the house a Dymaxion house. It also allows it to be broken down, put on board a flatbed truck, and driven to the next location. As you look at the floor, you're going to notice that there are these slats. They fold up like an accordion. So it would actually fold up, and you could lay it back out. So it was designed to be entirely mobile. Open kitchen, same floor as in the rest of the house, the accordion type of flooring. As in uh, Cité Radios uh, Le Corbusier in uh, Marseille, the whole counter is metal, easy to clean, easy to maintain. The kitchen is integrated, so it's super sleek. All in one kitchen, right? All in one kitchen that would include refrigerated drawers and shelves. So as in the restaurant industry these days, cabinets that, that, that are refrigerated are, are just common. In the 50s of the 20th century, they were not. We are t talking about the beginning of industrial scale commercial appliances. And then the, you go to the living room and uh, space. First thing you know is space. If we're talking about the circumference, it's probably one third of the cake is living room. I like the fact that, uh, let's say, the separation between kitchen and the living room, it doesn't go all the way. Air circulates through the house every six minutes. At the very top of the mass, you have a flue that opens, drawing hot air up and out, and ventilation panels drop to draw cool air in. Just by having these panels open, it's going to draw air all the way through, up through the central mass. It's going to rotate around, so you're going to have a churning effect because you have a flue at the very top. Just by atmospheric difference alone, it's going to form a vacuum to draw air up and out. But Mr. Fuller was a fan of the environment. In fact, he thought it was our imperative duty to take care of the Earth as much as possible. He thought of this even in the 1900s, right? 
So rainwater, if you look at the roofing slats, you're gonna notice some rib-like features here. From the outside of the house, the roofing slats are separated, allowing for a gap of space to allow rainwater to come inside. But Mr. Fuller's unique ventilation system would allow for a rain indoor rain gutter system to collect rainwater from the outside and the foil layers would collect our condensation in order to redirect that extra moisture into a PVC pipe and that would lead to the base of the house uh, in a holding tank. And you know, here we are in you know, almost 2020, just now embarking on those ideas. Now keep in mind, this house was designed from materials that were available in the 1940s. We have many more materials available now. We have carbon fiber, we've got fiberglass. So it's plastic. Yeah, plexiglass. And you notice the riveting? This is how they constructed the airplanes. First thing we saw when we came, it, was, it looks like an airstream, but the airstream is also yeah. for the moment, right? So yeah. it's, it's, it's all connected. It is. I mean, so the airstream was one. Uh, Buckminster Fuller also designed a Dymaxion car with the same high tension holding the car it together because he wanted to be able to break it apart. It was really really liked the structure of high tension cable wires and the lattice structure. He went on to design the geodesic dome and learned a lot about the way that particles form in nature and cellular structure. And now come to find out the C60 carbon atom is following that intuition by which he designed. This is a concept of tensegrity. This shape connected to these Euclidean forms here is going to create a tension that is going to keep it together. Buckminster Fuller was very interested in, the, in how nature seems to be very aware of the best designs. Concepts such as tensegrity that just would evolve into geodesic domes. You know, the dimension concept comes from a moment where mass production was starting from World War II Ford into commercial products. You know, we're talking about the beginning of commercial flights. Aircrafts from that moment resemble airstreams. You see the riveted metal structure and you see how aerodynamics just help keep them in the air, you know? So the wind tunnel effect is very important for an airplane. Bookie Fuller thought it was also important for a house who has to sustain a family during extreme weather conditions. In this same place, we can also see, here is a camper van. So Bookie Fuller's day Maxim precedes this Volkswagen camper, the iconic house, house on Wells. So this is a 1959 Volkswagen Westfalia, the original Westie. Previous to having a more refined version of house on Wells, you had a camping, a more Spartan tent. In this case, from the 20s, we are talking about a tarp on top of a metal structure on wheels to be tall. You know, this idea, it's very modern, the idea to go back to the wood and try to just reconnect with something that in modern life you've lost because you're living in urban environments. And here, the origin of modern recreational vehicles, again, we're talking about the wind tunnel, the same materials, riveted, stainless steel. Those things were conceived to be tall, not to fly, but we sort of see a same, uh, right? Building expertise being diverted into another. So we are talking about in the 30s, during the recession. But it's fascinating how Bookie Fuller was trying to utilize all the mass production materials and techniques available at the moment and that needed to be either reconverted or closed down for he wanted to use that, all that momentum and keep going with it and just remain housing. I'd like to see how this could work on a system of houses as a neighborhood. Could be almost like a molecular structure, like very organic, like drops of mercury. And they come together, they separate it very easily. Nature would understand a neighborhood that is created with drops of water. If you wanted to create something cheap, mass produced that could harvest rain, easy to clean, easy to move, aerodynamic, that could stand extreme weather phenomena. That was the prefab of that moment. It has tested to withstand high winds of up to 120 miles per hour, single planed plexi. The thing is, is the bankers like traditional windows. So what would have traditional windows done to a, a house like this? Well, I don't think that it would have been able to stand that, you know, category one tornado. 
who knows where we would be today if this house had gone into production. I do believe that Buckminster Fuller was looking toward potential tornado, flood, and hurricane adaptive housing. But unfortunately, the bankers just did not feel confident enough with the design to push it forward. Some people think that this is a failure. I don't think this is a failure at all. 120 miles per hour success? Yeah, that's, that's, that's success in extreme weather conditions, you know? It's interesting that the system's thinking, everything makes more sense now. You're talking about extreme weather, which is some patterns are coming harder and harder. We're talking about materials that could be used in industrial scale. We're talking about refat. A lot of things are ideas that are just now floating and somebody could probably come and grasp some of them.